go on. And they go out and away they go. And it's a pretty good start from Sean Trainer from the outside of the front row. He immediately gets into the lead ahead of Aaron Cook, who slots into second place. They're going about three wide, a bit further back. Might be a bit of contact there. Nick Williamson was over involved. Maxine Nichols has had a spin, and one of the other roadsters has gone off John, as well. Jonathan Grimes, I think. So Jonathan Grimes, we think, has also come to grief there. They, that's before they've even got to Old Tour Corner. The leaders are now at Cascades, and the top two pulling away here in the order. Trainer from Cook, and it's Ali Topri then leading this little battle Red for flags. third position. But the red lights are I on already, I'm afraid, it, Josh. It might actually be Jim Yu. It's either 78 or 79 off there at Old Hall. Uh, hard to tell from the, uh, the light here, but that's not how we wanted today <laughs> to start. But there, there was five abreast higher up. I thought that's where things were yes. going to go wrong. So I didn't quite catch what happened a little bit further down the order. Because um, actually that front group were, who were five cars across the circuit, which I didn't actually know was terribly possible at Alton Park. But uh, it turns out it is. There are some uh, tyre marks on the circuit, aren't they? Yes. So I'm not sure if that's from this accident or from a previous event. Well, I think it, those look fresh to me. Um, uh, so we can see them veering across to the left-hand side of the circuit where both of the cars have ended up before the apex of, uh, of Old Hall Caller really it happened as a start line incident rather than an incident going through the corner, I, I would say. Uh, and as you say, there the, the was some, uh, some slightly concerning moments a little bit further up the field, wasn't there? Uh, sort of just behind the two leaders who very quickly sorted themselves out into the order of trainer and cook. I'm wondering if the left hand side of the circuit, which is the outside uh, row, is where the drier surface well, is because yes. that's the racing line, isn't it? It does look that way, doesn't it? If we just look out of our commentary box window, uh, you can see uh, very much as you can see on that shot there, it's a different part of the track for those of you watching on the live stream, but that is a much drier part of the circuit than the right-hand side. So that's certainly an advantage if you're starting on the outside of the grid. The good news is, firstly, Jim Hughes has been able to drive away and Maxine Nichols has got out of the car, car by herself, so both drivers OK there. Minutes. Red lights go on and they go out. Away we go then. It's a better start this time from Aaron Cook from pole position. And he's got his nose in front as they head down towards uh, Old Hall Corner for the first time. He's got Sean Trainer to his left. They're side by side as they go through the first corner but it looked like this time everyone has at least made it safely into Old Hall for the first time and then they drop their way down to the uh, Cascades. There's one that spun that looked like it might have been Paul Cook's old car now in the hands of Christopher Allison but they are turning their way through the left-hander at Cascades. And there you can see Ali Topley's car go through. He I think is the first of the Mark II's as the leaders head off down towards Shell Oil's corner for the first time. And Train has got back ahead, hasn't he, somewhere there. So he's into the lead where he was on the, uh, the first uh, start to this race. And it's Cook in second. Topley's got himself up into third, or oh, in third place where he started, ahead of Sam Harper. Dan Sylvester's up next. He's made a fantastic start from 10th on the grid. He's already into fifth. And he's there just ahead of uh, winner from last time out, Adam Lockwood, who hops over the curves as they go into the Britain chicane for the first time. Yep, so through Britons, then they'll climb up to uh, Hilltop, they'll crest the hill, and then those of you uh, watching in the main sort of arena section will see the cars come into view as they head down towards his slots, and then the Nickerbrook sequence, which is where they're at now. So Topley there in third, Sam Harper fourth, it's Adam Lockwood uh, just behind Dan Sylvester. Those two vying for fifth and sixth positions overall. They're side by side going up Clay Hill. Adam Lockwood, who was the winner last time out at Cadwell Park, fully alongside Dan Sylvester there. That's the fight for fifth position. They're still beside one another as they go into Druids. But it looks like, Josh, that Lockwood has just about made that work. Yeah, so he's back through. Uh, he did start fifth, didn't he, Lockwood? So he's got that position back ahead of Dan Sylvester. The top two are getting away. Trainer ahead of Kirk. Be interesting. Uh, to see if Cook just sits there because that's where we think he needs to finish in this race uh, or whether he tries to challenge to take another race win so they come up across the line for the first time and at the moment trainer's got a few car lengths over Aaron Cook then as top leads in third into fourth now has come Adam Lockwood so into Lodge Corner he managed to get himself another position he's got himself up ahead there of Sam Harper Harper now under threat uh, from Sylvester some of them cars running in wide out of Old Hall it's going to be slippery when you get off the circuit so you don't want to 
um, go too wide, obviously track limits a factor from a penalties point of view, but also because it's probably not a great place to be too far out of the circuit limits because it's still probably pretty damp in those areas. So they go down Lakeside, down towards Island Bend with Sean Trainer leading by half a second. Yep, at the end of the first lap of this race. It doesn't look half a second now, does it, as they head through Island Bend and towards Shallow's Corner for the second time uh, in this race there. We picked them up uh, on the uh, on the exit of the corner heading back through the sweeper before Britain. So it's Trainer from Cook. Then a bit of a gap back to the first of the Class B cars. That's Ali Topley who's already wrapped up the Mark II division for this year. He is in third position at the moment but I wonder if he's going to come under a bit of threat then from Adam Lockwood who would made up a place on the first lap to get up into fourth position ahead of Sam Harper but the leaders still pretty close as they head through his lops at Nickerbrook for the second time. They certainly are, they don't be much closer could they without making contact at this point because Aaron Cook has got himself right on the tail of the race leader uh, Sean Trainer, and they go then over um, the uh, Clay Hill there and down towards uh, Druid. So Sean Trainer, who's leading, hasn't won since uh, July at Brands Hatch, so he'd quite like uh, to do that. Where Anne Cook has done all but one of the winning since that meeting. Uh, there is Sylvester, who has he lost? No, he hasn't lost a vote. He's on now the tail of Sam Harper for fifth. And in that battle as well, you've got Nick Williamson, who's side by side now with Sylvester. He's coming down the inside to get sixth position into Lodge Corner. Nick Williamson, who started ninth, up into P6, as uh, the car in front runs a little wide. Yeah, that's some half going wide, but Williamson was off on the grass, wasn't he, at uh, Druids on the first lap of the race. So did well to uh, keep that out of the wall, as it were, and, and get back in place. Sean Trainer in the race lead has done the best lap of the race at 204.64 on the first flying lap. The lap record for these cars are 201.63, so about three seconds outside the lap record for the moment. This is the main battle then for P3, the final overall podium position. That's between number 41, Ali Topley, and uh, Cadwell Park race winner number one, uh, number 11, I should say, Adam Lockwood. They are heading off down to Island Bend. They're already three to four seconds behind the two race leaders, Trainer and Cook, as they work lap three of what we think is going to be a six lap race. There's the Rogue Motorsport prepared car of uh, Ali Topley just heading through Shallow's corner. The two leaders, though, are still pretty close, and we've got a car that's stopped on the exit of Old Hall. That's the number 67 car, which is that of uh, Simon Quinn. I think he's got that going again, Josh. Yeah, he was running 26 before that rotation out of Old Hall. Really, only flags momentarily. Here's the battle for fifth, which is Harper versus Williamson versus Sylvester. At this point of the track, the leaders are closer, aren't they? So we saw this a lap ago. So rounds at the back of the track, Aaron Cook is quicker and gets onto the terms with Sean Trainer. And they go through Nickerbrook on the previous lap, through the Druid section. Sean Trainer was able to pull away. So we'll see whether that is replicated on this lap. Cook uh, looking quite racy as they go up towards Druids then. On lap three of the race, they hop over the curb. So they're happy to use that uh, despite the damp conditions we've uh, had here this morning. But uh, they seem to survive any kind of moment. And Trainer still ahead of Cook as they go now down uh, towards Lodge Corner, the final corner here. Oh, the final proper corner here on the Elton Park circuit before then they go up and over the left-hand curve at De uh, Deers Leap to complete three laps of racing. It's still train ahead of Cook, but they seem closer at the end of the lap than what uh, we've seen in the past, but not close enough quite uh, for Aaron Cook to have a go. But he's done the fastest lap. He's in the freeze now, so we're only a couple of seconds away from what we were doing 12 months ago. He's sliding the car around. He's over the curves. It doesn't feel to me, Ian, like he's settling for second place. He'd quite like to win this. Always good to go out on a high, isn't it? And uh, a victory would do him very nicely, but second place as far as the championship concerned would work equally as well and uh, just four tenths between the two leaders at the end of the lap they were now four to five seconds clear of Topley and Lockwood who were second or were third and fourth I should say Williamson then ahead of Harper in, into sixth place so Sylvester back in seventh and there's a gap back to Billy Boggis who's eighth Lee Brown and Rachel sixth is ninth and Neil Stratton and Rachel four rounding out the top ten in one of the roadsters there you can see the two leaders they're making their way out of Shallow's corner back to the Britain chicane for the fourth time in this race, still as close as they, ever thought they were. Aaron Cook, they're taking an awful lot of the uh, first apex curve at Britain's that time, but momentarily up onto the two wheels. For fifth, Sylvester's got uh, past Harper and Williamson, who he was behind, I think, at the start yes, of the lap. 
And here's the battle for eight between Billy Boggis, Lee Brown and Neil Stratton as they then climb over Hilltop for the fourth time in this race. Already down at Nickerbrook, there are the leaders. And again, Aaron Cook is very close to the back of Sean Trainer, but he's not uh, been able to put a proper challenge on as of yet. He takes that wider, tight left-hand side of the track over uh, Clay Hill. But uh, again, it just uh, isn't able to propel himself ahead. These two cars, of course, built to the same uh, tight regulation. So they're absolutely equal cars. And around this circuit with a bit of dampness offline, it's not easy to uh, make an overtake, particularly when you've got this championship to worry about for Aaron Cook. He's just putting lots of pressure onto the race leader and uh, at this point not been able to draw alongside, but he's right behind him as they come up across the line to complete four laps. So with two laps to go, is Aaron Cook uh, going to challenge while the battles go on further back? Well, they're getting closer and closer to the back of the race leader, but we're watching here, as you say, some of the battles down the order there. That's the battle for 9th and 10th, or 8th, 9th and 10th. Billy Boggisley, Brown and Neil Stratton. They're Stratton in the yellow roadster up against the two Mark Twos. And he's got Darren Aldrich in the number six car uh, just behind him as well. And they're turning their way into Old Corner at the start of lap number five. So they're being caught by Darren Aldworth in, who's about the fifth fastest person on the circuit here. So he started 13th on the grid and he's progressed in a couple of places, but he's got lots of pace. He's lapping two and a half seconds quicker than the cars in front of him. Yep, so he should uh, should make fairly easy work of the, those three cars ahead of him. He might catch the likes of Sam Harper and Nick Williamson before the end. Daniel Sylvester, meanwhile, he pulled out quite a gap, didn't he, um, over Williamson and Harper once he'd got through ahead of them, but actually wasn't any quicker than the cars ahead of him over Adam Lockwood and Ali Topley, who we're looking at now. They're in third and fourth position. They're just making their way through Britain's about six seconds behind the leaders. Ali Topley, uh, Aaron Cook and Sean Trainer. Sean Trainer still ahead. Aaron Cook was trying to get through as they headed down towards uh, his locks that time and uh, had to back out of that in the end by the looks of it. It is still difficult offline because it is damp offline uh, and even the oval racing experience that Aaron Cook has from his time before he came onto the circuits in the MR2s uh, not, uh, not working out for him there. So he's heading up to Druids with a lap to go at the end of this one trying to go out on a high, get seal the championship with a win. Yeah, he's overlapping into Shellow's hairpin as well. Oh, there's a trainer's heavy sideways here. He got over the damp through Druids. He hit the car as fish and all the way out of the corner. But he managed to keep the momentum up fantastically. Perhaps Aaron Cook was a little bit tentative behind him while the car in front was sliding around the circuit. But trainer held on there. But that was a pretty dodgy moment. And he's under so much pressure as they go on to the last lap of the race from... Aaron Cook, the two drivers have won most of the races in the MR2 Championship over the last six years, head into Old Tool absolutely together, just a couple of tenths of a second between them. Trainer in front, but Aaron Cook is looking so racy at this point, Ian. He is, he's really putting the pressure on Sean Trainer, who's looking for his sixth victory of the season. He's just got about two miles of the, this race left to go now to try and fend off Aaron Cook, but that's certainly not going to be straightforward. Problems there for number 20. That's uh, Patrick Stoner, the driver from Bristol. His roadster, he is coming to a stop, so he is out of the race, I am afraid. As the leaders flash past there at Ireland, and it looked like Cook was going to try and get alongside as they went down towards uh, Shallow's corner, possibly. We'll try and pick them up in a second on the exit there. And still they come out, Josh, in the same order. Yep. The, the biggest challenge we saw last time, I guess, was down in towards his lot. But uh, we'll see if Cook can carry the speed through it. It's where he hops over the kerb there. He seems to be able to carry the momentum then uphill over Hilltop and then down towards uh, the Hislop uh, Nickerbrook section. Of course, there was yellow flags at times. The drivers had to be a little bit more cautious. But again, Cook is quicker as they come into that green flag zone. He's uh, not able, though, to get alongside Sean Trainer, who continues uh, to lead. But again, by the smallest of margins, Cook takes a wider line into Nickerbrook to try and carry the speed up here. And he's done that, Ian. He's Ooh. almost getting alongside as they go up Clay Hill, but he's on the dampness. He's almost on the grass as well. He, well, he was, I think, two wheels on the grass, wasn't he there? Up Clay Hill as he forged away through as they go to Driz. He's going to be on the outside line 
for that particular corner, so Trainer holds on there. It's certainly not for the want of trying on the part of Aaron Cook there, who's giving it everything he's got here. I think that might have been his last challenge because he's a little bit further behind Sean Trainer now as they come up into Lodge Corner for the final time. If they turn into Lodge, it's Sean Trainer, number 27, looking for his sixth victory of the season against the man who is going to be crowned as champion, even with second place here. He comes up to the line, he takes the checkered flag, he flashes his lights, he knows that that's enough. Second place for Aaron Cook, the win for Sean Trainer, but Aaron Cook is your 2022 Toyota Tires Toyota MR2 champion. Ali Topley takes third position. Adam Lockwood is in fourth spot. Fifth place goes the way of Dan Sylvester, just ahead of Nick Williamson. <laughs> and everyone else, by the looks of it, is going to be sixth. Look at this as they come up the line. Three of them side by side. We'll wait for the timekeepers to reach a verdict on that one. It looks like this is for seventh, I should say. Uh, Neil Stratton, number 84, getting seventh place in the end. Billy Boggis, number 99, eighth. And Sam Harper, on that last lap, shuffled back to ninth position with... Darren Old with rounding out the top ten, so that was quite a decent scrap down the order, wasn't it, as well, Josh? Yeah, obviously something went on a bit old hole, didn't it, for whoever was in front. Uh, lose momentum, then coming uphill, so that was a great battle away from the leaders who had that brilliant battle on that last lap. There was no quarter given, really, was there, as they went uphill. Certainly Aaron Cook wasn't settling for second place, that's absolutely for sure. He gave it everything.